Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chess24 Legends of Chess Tournament. Uh, it's a game that a lot of you have requested but we didn't get time to show. Uh, from the match, uh, Boris Gelfand versus Vishwanathan Anand and this is the first game of their match. Uh, so let's see why so many of you have requested it and uh, it, it is a very nice game. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's check it out. And also, uh, I got a new PC. So if, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys, uh, if, if anything is different, do mention in the comments if everything is okay with the sound, with the audio, uh, with the video, as this is the first time I'm recording with the new setup. Like everything is much smoother on my end. So even though if, if there is no difference for you, I, I hope you guys are happy for everything going smooth on my end. But like, I, I'm, I'm, I think like there should be, you know, some more frames or, you know, should be smoother. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, and also the, the board should uh, be much quicker, uh, but we'll see. So uh, without further ado, let's check it out. The board is with the white pieces, opens with uh, d4. Uh, we have knight to f6 by Anand, c4, e6, and of course we go for the queen's gambit decline. Knight f3, that's not a queen's gambit declined. Uh, whoa, sorry about that. Uh, d5. And we have the Queen's Gambit decline. We have g3. Seems the, the the new setup is a bit too fast. And bishop to b4 with check. And here uh, uh, Anand is uh, checking will Boris uh, block with the knight like this, like this, like this with the bishop or what. So bishop to d2. Boris offers a trade. And Anand goes back. So losing a tempo. But Boris will also need to uh, waste a tempo as the bishop is kind of... Uh, kind of weird on d2. So bishop to g2 and Anand castles. We have queen to c2 and now knight b to d7. So just nicely continuing development. And this position has been reached in top tier tournaments like almost 70 times. And the go-to move here is just castles. But Boris, uh, as he's a great student of the uh, modern uh, opening theory, you know, sponsored by Neural Networks, uh, goes h4. And it is a new move in the position. So already as of move 8, we have a completely new game. Uh, Anand continues to uh, uh, just uh, develop. We have c5. He strikes in the center. As you should, it is very principled to do that, especially since uh, Gelfand's king is still in the center of the board. So c captures, e captures, and now knight to c3. Just continues development. The rook to e8, and now, uh, of course, Boris castles to safety. Uh, we have h6 by Anand taking away the g5 square uh, from black's pieces and now bishop to f4. So this is the moment that we've mentioned that Boris will also need to waste the move uh, that, um, uh, uh, well, the bishop just isn't all that impressive on d2. So here, bishop to f4, eyeing that c7 square, ideas like knight b5 to c7 might be a problem for black in the future. So a6 taking away the b5 square from uh, Gelfand's knight and now rook a to d1. Continuing development, we have c4 by Anand, kind of anti-positional, uh, but you know, if it works, why not? Here he abandons the fight for the central d4 square, but he is preparing b5, b4, and so on. So of course, uh, Boris needs to do something about that. First, he goes knight to e5, opens up the diagonal of this light square bishop, uh, and of course, his plan is to play some like b3 capture here, captures and e4, and grab full control of the central squares. So knight to b6 by Anand, uh, and now b3, of course, going for that uh, uh, center. We have bishop to b4 by Anand, and now captures on c4. We have captures on c4, and now that this pawn is no longer fighting for the e4 square, uh, Gelfand pushes e4. And now you can see that uh, Gelfand controls a lot of squares here. He still has the bishop pair, so white is definitely a little bit better here. And Anand has this, uh, well, weirdly placed knight on, on b6. So we have a5. And grabbing more space on the queen side. Now the bishop is also defended and the knight to b5. He, as he allowed it, uh, so Boris takes advantage of this b5 square. And now if this knight moves, let's say captures, then of course knight to c7 will, will be an idea. So knight to h5, Anand wants this bishop to just move away with bishop to e3 and now bishop to d7, uh, forcing this knight to move back uh, or uh, offering it to, to this knight on e5. And it kind of looks weird just giving up uh, this knight uh, for this bishop on d7, as it seems like this bishop is uh, this knight is way stronger than, than this bishop. But uh, much like in the case of uh, Bobby Fischer versus uh, Tigran Petrosian, uh, uh, it's sometimes just better to capture the inactive piece as it might become incredibly active. So, and if you don't know which game I'm talking about, I will put a link to it in the description below. It's really an awesome game. So knight captures on d7, uh, rather than just retreating with the knight, we have queen captures and now a4, defending this knight here. We have knight back to f6 by Anand, preparing a, a very nasty trick, uh, one that, uh, well, now that uh, now that I mention it like this, it does remind me of, of Bobby Fischer's game of the century. 
So here, uh, d5 by Boris, you can see how much uh, squares uh, Boris controls here. The, the bishop is excellent attacking this knight here. The rooks are excellent. Uh, well, not this one, but uh, once once it's developed, it will be. And of course, the, the two central pawns are very impressive. So here, Anand really doesn't have uh, all that much to do. And also d6 is just coming, which will be very annoying. So uh, Anand has one move that really helps him out in this uh, in this position. So feel free to pause the video here and try to figure it out while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on figuring out that uh, by mentioning uh, Bobby Fischer's game of the century, I was talking about the knight to a4 move. Uh, and now that you that now that you see it, it kind of does make sense because even though the material on the board is equal, Anand has three pawns here on the queen side. Boris has only one, and here Anand just eliminates that one. Uh, he gives up a piece for it, but now uh, he will have three pawns uh, on, uh, connected pawns on the queen side. So Boris accepts the challenge uh, with queen captures on a4. You could not accept the piece, like you could go e5 and just consider it a trade to make the, the game a, a little bit crazy. For example, captures, captures. And now the queen guards the knight, for example, queen d7, you can even capture here, but it's hard to hard to decide whether this is better. Uh, probably is, but Boris, uh, Boris respects a good piece. So he plays the queen captures on a4, uh, and now knight captures on e4, uh, as now the uh, nothing is uh, defending this pawn anymore. We have bishop captures and the rook captures. So uh, Anand now uh, has two pawns for, for the piece. Knight to c3, now with a double attack, attacking the rook and also the queen here, so Anand must trade queens here. So captures, captures, and now b5. And all of a sudden, Anand has three connected pass pawns on the queen side, and Boris is up a full knight. So knight to b6, attacking the rook, and rook to d8. Now, just hoping to block off the, the pass to d pawn, we have bishop to f4, hoping for d6, now that the bishop and the rook will be uh, guarding it, d6, d7 is coming, so bishop to d6, Anand blocks it and makes room for his own pass pawns to be pushed forward. So bishop captures, we have rook captures, and now knight to c8, going after this rook, rook to d7, and now d6. Uh, Boris could also try to repeat with uh, something like this, just uh, this and this, but I'm, I'm sure Boris is uh, still trying to win this, as he, he is up a piece, and you have to respect uh, a full piece, especially if, like, like it's, if, if it's a knight. So d6, uh, and now comes c3. Uh, Anand starts pushing his pass pawn. We have rook to d5, going after the b5 pawn and b4. And now we have this very interesting position where Boris has to decide whether to go for this a5 pawn or not. Uh, of course, it's much of a uh, too, too big of a uh, decision to make uh, in a rapid chess when the time on the clock is ticking, but I will show it as it's incredibly interesting. If uh, you go for the a5 pawn, then c2 is coming, and now you have to, of course, see if you if you are able to stop both of the passed pawns. So the point is, knight e7 check, king h7, knight f5, you remaneuver the knight all the way here to defend the, the pawn like this. Uh, rook to c4, now preparing to just win the rook, and now rook to c1. Block it, now comes b3 and rook b5, now preparing to win the b3 pawn. Uh, and here black will just say, okay, g6, you move your knight, I'm going to capture this pawn, and I'm still going to have a very nice position, but this is where white has to uh, accept the draw with rook captures here. And now after everything gets traded off, rook b2 will go after this pawn, uh, captures, and now let's say captures, captures, and captures, and we have this completely equal endgame, uh, and now of course it's a draw. So uh, rook captures uh, leads to a draw, whether Boris calculated this and said, uh, no, I still, I'm still up a piece, I still want to win this, or was it maybe too much to calculate for uh, such little time on the clock? Uh, I guess uh, we, we will not know, uh, but it was interesting. So here, knight back to b6 by Boris. We have rook to d8 and now d7. Now he got his pawn all the way to d7, and now if he can get rook to c5 to c8 uh, in there, it's just game over as the knight uh, defends this. Uh, so that's his plan, and you have to be very careful. Uh, like, if you do something weird, th this is coming. So uh, we have rook to e6, now going after the knight. Now rook c5, of course, rook captures knight, but now comes knight to a4. And rook to c6 by Anna. Now preventing this, but uh, now uh, Gelfand finds a, a different strategy. Knight to c5. 
again defending this and now he wants to go uh, in this way uh, maybe you can even go like this but it would be dangerous to to get this rook away from the defense of the of the queening squares so here we have rook to c7 you could try even something like rook captures rook captures and rook captures here uh, and then try and see whether the three pass pawns would be uh, sufficient for the extra rook but uh, all in all this is also a draw uh, with uh, for example uh, if rook to a1 going after the pawn you're going to go rook d2 take care of the this square and now after this uh, pawn is captured you're going to play b3 and now after this pawn is captured you're going to play rook to d1 check king g2 and b2 and now of course the pawn is queening uh, white will stop it but uh, at some point you will have to uh, give up the rook and now again you we just trade down into a draw so it is possible at any point you can go for this but rook back to c7 anand wants uh, 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 anand still wants to win here and this is why this game is so nice uh, at any point Anand can go for a draw and Boris can go for a draw but they both want to win so here rook to e5 now threatening this if it comes with check it's game over because you either win the rook or rook captures followed by pawn captures uh, with a promotion so king h7 and now comes rook to a1 uh, if rook to e8 now then you just uh, uh, capture this pawn and now the rook is hanging so here you'd have to trade and now of course uh, black is completely winning the three connected pass pawns are much stronger than a knight so here rook to a1 now finally boris goes after the a5 pawn but now uh anand finds a4 and a4 is really awesome because if knight captures then you get rid of this pawn and without this pawn white will be in in very big trouble uh, so here uh, Gelfand goes for rook captures on a4 instead but now c2 now, now uh, Gelfand has no rook defending the c1 square so he has to go back if you go knight b3 it's not enough for example you just capture the pawn and now after rook captures here uh, now you find the absolute brilliant rook to c3 uh, next move you can just capture and promote to a queen knight c1 doesn't do anything because rook d1 check picks up the knight if rook e1 again just rook to d1 and it, it's game over so here uh, of course anand would be completely winning so rook back to a1 you you need to keep an eye on this square and now finally rook d captures on d7 anand now gives up the exchange but basically what it does is uh, allow boris to be up a full rook so here knight captures rook captures and we sort of have this uh young gustafsson endgame where one player is up a rook but uh, the problem is um uh, it's not that easy to play with the two rooks because these two pawns are just incredibly strong so here boris uh plays rook to c5 as you should always put a rook behind a pass pawn like unless you shouldn't uh here it's uh uh, definitely one of those cases uh it's either between rook to e1 or rook to c5 but rook to e1 uh, might be a bit more resilient although in a rapid game with very little time on the clock calculating this is is a nightmare for example rook b uh, for example if b3 rook a c1 uh, now of course if this you can capture so of course black would defend and now uh you go king g2 and now finally after b2 you ignore black and just continue with king f3 uh, because now you say okay I have to give up the rook so captures uh, with captures and now the the thing is is this winning or is this a draw uh, it is unless it's some sort of a famous study it should be uh, should be should be winning for black king g6 king e2 and now king f5 and now the problem is you either allow the black king to enter your pawns or you block him uh, but then comes rook to c3 and now the problem is if you go here to win this pawn then just captures captures you start giving up pawns on the king's side and if you try to waste moves let's say king f2 then let's say h5 king e2 g5 captures captures king f2 and now finally f5 and with f4 you will create a past h pawn which will be which will be winning for example king e2 you repeat f4 king f2 captures captures h4 check you're gonna go king f2 or g2 king f4 and now finally after this h3 and now these two squares are covered from the white king and there is nothing more to be done here king e2 h2 you're gonna go here h1 queen captures and now finally this uh uh, win, wins the game so it is very interesting uh, but uh, it, it is very resilient but in the end it should also be losing for white so Boris instead went rook to c5 he just put the rook behind the pass pawn but this also is insufficient Anand plays b3 now defends his pass pawn uh, rook to f1 he doesn't want to allow rook to d1 uh, to come with check so rook to f1 and now rook to d1 uh, all the same here Boris played king to g2 but now feel free to pause the video here and win the win the game for Anand in the fastest way possible while I give you a couple of seconds 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's Rook captures on F1. And now after King captures on F1, just B2. And now one of the two pawns is queening and White is unable to do anything about this. And it was in this position on move uh, 45 that Boris Gelfand resigned the game. Uh, and Anand was able to win game two as well. Game three was a draw, so Anand uh, won the match against Gelfand without even reaching game four. So here you resign because, of course, if captures, this comes with check, and once the king moves, just uh, uh, capturing it. Uh, I will mention something. If you enjoy playing bullet, uh, you might uh, find yourself uh, in a position like this, and uh, often uh, it's uh, interesting, for example, if this happens, and you're, you're in this position, and you're playing white, uh, and someone plays something like this, then just play this, block it with uh, rook to c1, because your opponent might pre-move this. They probably think you, you will play king here, and then they pre-move this. So if you play rook to c2, they might pre-move this, and you just win the queen. And, you know, I, I've tried this, um, like, so many times, and it works, like, 10% of the times. But still, you know, try it if, if you're into bullet. But yeah, after b2, uh, Boris uh, resigned, and an excellent uh, victory for Vishwanathan Anand that... Uh, uh, whole line starting with knight captures on e a4 with the knight sacrifice was uh, I incredible. So yeah, uh, once again, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Edward Edison, uh, Apostol Skirmanis, uh, Emre uh, Ergetsen, uh, Juan Vincente Alvarez, and Glenn Mangold for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the Chess 24 Legends finals, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your Friday, and do mention if everything is okay with the video, the audio, as this is the first video I'm recording with the new setup. Uh, see you soon.